Something that a lot of people might not know in Final Cut Pro is that you can change any cross dissolve by clicking on it, then going up into your inspector and changing the look from video over to one of these different options. And at the very top is this film option. Now the differences between the film dissolve and the regular cross dissolve are extremely subtle, but there is something just a little bit more pleasing about using the film variant. So if you're anything like me, you might find yourself constantly setting your regular cross dissolves over to the film version. And it might make you wonder, why can't I just set the film version as the default inside of Final Cut Pro? Now, while you might not be able to set the film version as the default inside of Final Cut Pro, you can rebuild the exact same effect using Apple Motion and then set that as the default. Now with all that being said, I do have a free version of this transition that you can download down below. It is pay what you want, so if you feel like supporting the channel, that is a great way to do so. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a deep dive into what sets these two transitions apart and how to build it inside of Apple Motion. Taking a look at the differences, you can see that the film version actually has a different type of easing to it, whereas the video version is just a straight linear cross dissolve. Another thing to take note of is how the bright areas and dark areas of the image are treated with this cross dissolve. You can see that the darkest part of the image here on the far right side is actually fading first before we get to the brighter parts of the image on the film version, whereas the video version is just going to drop in opacity all at the same time. Let's go ahead and take a look at a more real world example. Again, paying attention to the bright parts of the image and the dark parts of the image. Pushing play, you can see that scene right here in the middle. You can see how the film version is bringing in the dark areas of the image first. And something you'll notice is that this video version isn't quite as rich as the film version. It almost looks a little bit more faded as the two images are blending. So now that we know the differences, let's go ahead and replicate this exact effect over in Apple Motion. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion if you don't get the project browser, you can go up to file, then select new from project browser. In here, we're going to select the Final Cut transition, and I'm going to recommend you set your presets to whatever you typically work with in Final Cut Pro. So if you typically work at 24 frames per second, then I would recommend setting your frame rate to that. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it at 60, and we're going to set our duration to one second. From there, we can push open. The first thing you'll notice is that we have transition A and transition B, and we need to cross dissolve between the two of these. So let's first select transition B and push I, which will extend that out to the beginning and selecting transition A, we'll scroll to the very end and push O. Next, we want to drive the cross dissolve based on brightness values inside of our clip. So the first thing we need to do is select our transition A and push K. This is going to create what's called a clone layer and that clone layer is going to perfectly match transition A. However, we also need to create one more clone layer of transition A. So I'm just going to push K and this time we're going to rename that clone layer to be the mask. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and click and drag this mask out into its own group. And let's just rename that whole group to be image mask. From there, we want this image mask layer to drive the transition on transition A. However, there are some weird limitations in motion where transition A cannot be driven by a clone layer of itself. So that's why we needed to create two clone layers. We're actually gonna go ahead and just disable the visibility of transition A altogether. Going up to the clone layer just above transition A, right click on it and then select add image mask. You can also get that with command shift M. Now before we can use this image mask, we need to first apply some effects to our mask layer. So selecting our mask layer, go on over to filters, go to color, and we're gonna select the threshold. Now the threshold is great because it compresses everything to two colors and we can set those colors here, black and white. But black and white can also be used to drive an image mask inside of motion. That's why this effect works so well. Now we don't want this to appear like a luma key effect because that is going to give us really sharp edges. We want the edges to be very smooth with this transition. To fix that, find the smoothness slider and go ahead and drag that all the way over to one. And you'll see now that we have this low contrast version of our image mask. From there, let's find our threshold slider and just drag that all the way to zero. That should give us an almost completely white image. After that, we'll go ahead and click to add a keyframe on our threshold, then go to the very end of our project where we can drag this all the way up to a full one. So pushing play, this is going to fade from almost completely white all the way down to black. However, something that is really present inside of the video film transition is the nice easing that is there. To get that, let's go on over to the right side and click on these three diamonds, which will give us our keyframe viewer. You can also get that with Command-8. 
Selecting one of the keyframes, let's go ahead and push Command A, which will select both of the keyframes, then we'll right click and select ease both. So now you can see this has applied a subtle S curve onto our two different keyframes. Now this is looking pretty great, but we need the image to be completely white for this effect to work properly. Otherwise we're going to have somewhat of a cut inside of our transition. So let's go on over to our library, go to our generators and locate the color solid. I'm gonna click and drag that over to the image mask layer. I'm gonna rename this color solid to be white. We'll go to the inspector then we'll change the color from blue over to a nice white color. After that, I'm going to push Command D to duplicate the white and we can rename this to be black. From there, we'll just change the color to be completely black. Keeping our black layer selected, let's go to our properties and find the opacity slider. Go ahead and drag that completely to zero. Then let's scroll on back to the very last few frames. I'm on a 60 frame timeline. You can just do this according to your taste, but I'm gonna work with the last five frames. Let's go ahead and click to add a keyframe on our opacity, then slide to the very end and drag that up to a full 100%. From there, you'll see that we now have this linear line for our transition. Let's go ahead and select one of those keyframes, push Command A, then right click and select Ease Both. After that, let's select the white layer. We'll go to the very beginning. We'll make sure our opacity is set to 100%. We'll click to add a keyframe and we can move forward about five frames or so and drag that down to zero. I'll select both keyframes once again. We'll right click, then select ease both. So now we're starting from a completely white image which fades slowly into the nice grayscale version and then completely to black. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and take our image mask group that we created and click and drag that over to the image mask which is driving the clone layer. Nothing has happened just yet because if we select our image mask, then go to the image mask settings, you'll see that our source channel is currently set to alpha. That means that the alpha channel of this image mask is driving the alpha channel of this clone layer. Unfortunately, right now we don't have any sort of alpha channel. So we need to change that from alpha over to luminance. And now that we've done that, if we push play, we can see the image slowly fading. It really doesn't look like too much is happening, but trust me, this effect is going to look so much better over inside of Final Cut Pro. Now that we've set up all of those layers, let's push Command S to save it, and that will allow us to publish to Final Cut Pro, and we can just call it Film Dissolve. From there, you can put it into whichever category you like, and if you wanna keep it in the same Dissolves category inside of Final Cut Pro, you could create a new category and just call it Dissolves. Then from there, we'll just go ahead and press Create. From there, let's push Publish, and let's jump over into Final Cut Pro. Now that we're in Final Cut Pro, let's go ahead and apply the transition by going to the far right, selecting our transitions, then we can scroll down until we find dissolves and in here we should see our film dissolve. I'll go ahead and apply that onto our clip and let's push play to see how that looks. And it's looking pretty nice. You can see how the brighter parts of the image are staying behind, the darker parts of the image are fading much faster. Additionally, inside of Final Cut Pro, if we want this to be the default transition, all we need to do is locate the film dissolve, right click on it, then select make default. So now anytime that I want that specific transition, I can just select the transition point, push command T, and we can then again see that it's taking place. Again, you can download this completely free down below. All I ask in return is you consider pressing that like button and maybe subscribing if you wanna see more videos just like this. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.